and welcome back to Biz Asia America. I'm Michelle McCory at the NASDAQ market site. JP Morgan's chairman and CEO Jamie Dimon gets to hold on to his unofficial title of world's most powerful banker. He has just survived a shareholder vote that could have possibly stripped him of at least one of those titles. The outcome is seen as having a wider impact than on just how Diamond's name appears on the company letterhead. Karina Huber has the story. London and New York have dominated global finance for centuries. While the two financial capitals have much in common, the way their companies are governed stand in stark contrast. In the UK, the majority of companies have a CEO who is separate from the chairman. In the U.S., most firms combine the two roles. In the U.S., we have the image of there's only one captain to a ship. We don't share control. Critics say that leads to less oversight of the CEO, who is essentially his own boss. But 2003 regulations require U.S. publicly traded companies have independent directors to assess the CEO's performance. If you have the individual directors keeping adequate transparency, accountability and oversight of the CEO, that it can work just fine. J.P. Morgan Chase weathered the financial crisis better than other banks, and its stock has risen dramatically over the past four years. Since the bottom of the market in March 2009, its share price is up more than 220 percent. But the $6.2 billion trading loss caused by the so-called London whale last year has caused numerous regulatory investigations which could hurt the bank. The real question is, is there a chance for the London whale to repeat itself in some other form at J.P. Morgan? I think they've taken some corrective actions. Are they enough? Not for every shareholder. While the bank's shareholders voted against stripping J.P. Morgan Chase's CEO of his chairman role this year, Coffey says the tide is turning in favor of the British way. It is a growing trend, and it's being pushed by both the largest, most active institutional investors and the proxy advisors, particularly ISS, or Institutional Shareholder Services, which gets a lot of shareholders to vote with it. Shareholder votes are non-binding, so essentially the board can ignore the wishes of shareholders. But as Coffey says, that comes at a cost, usually in a company's share price. Karina Huber, CCTV, New York.